Steve Rossi here. It's great making a difference with these podcasts. It's nice to know at the end of the day you made a difference. Is there any commercial I can see, any, any, any office I can go into where it doesn't talk about how great it feels to make a difference? It's like almost they're telling us. You know what feels really great? Making a difference. It's almost they're trying to convince themselves. I, I, I know I'm not having a specific reference, but I, I, I just pay attention, anything. You know, it's really rewarding knowing you're making a difference. What in the hell are you saying? Anything is a difference. I got my egg to make those cookies. Uh, I got it from the night shift guy when he came in at 4 in the morning. It made a huge difference. I was excited. I made the cookies. Ate them all at 4.30 in the morning. Felt sick. Woke up at 9 thinking, I'm always either full or starving. What the hell's wrong with me? I feel sick. It's a difference. I don't have a real point here. Just, it's just so redundant. It's so good knowing I made a difference. So good knowing I made a difference. How about so good knowing you helped me? Helped out a person one-on-one. Actually did your thing. Yeah, you made a difference. You made my whole life more, more fucking miserable. You made my whole day harder because of those differences you created. I'm Mr. Rossi. Uh, uh, Mr. Rossi, we just want you to know that the high dollar you put on your account now is no longer there just to make a difference. What? Mm. It's the same voice every time. I don't know if it's a robot. I don't know who my phone company hires to get all the same voices. Uh, Mr. Rossi, we took all your money and it's no longer there to make a difference. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love knowing a difference has been made. Every commercial, I actually laughed at a little commercial yesterday. There was a, it's it's silly, but Jimmy John's always has the freaky fast in their commercials. I always say, if you can, Jimmy John's is freaky fast delivery. So if you can order your food and jerk off in the time Jimmy John's arrives, you're a freaky fast masturbator. But now they they just had some silly commercial about some guy slicing lettuce. Like this guy slices the lettuce uh, uh, so much all day, a inch, a quarter of an inch all day, slicing the lettuce. Congratulations, you lettuce freak. And I kind of chuckled. And it occurred to me, it's the first time I ever chuckled at a commercial. I mean, everyone in the world talks about commercials, but it's, it's just, it's the idiotic redundancy. It's a car commercial, then it's a family who's all happy in a car. When have you been in a car with a family? Happy. A whole car full of family? And they're all, like, the dad's always just too daddish. He's just, he's just nerdy enough. I, I just want to put his head in the toilet every time. Not even flush it, just stick his head in the toilet so they got to plunge it out. And, like, they're show advertising this couch, this couch that turns into, like, 40 different things. And, like, the kids love it. And, like, uh, they're so young that the one boy comes in, and he's, he's playing his video game. He can't bother to look up, and he's got dark hair. You know, he's a, he's a real, uh... He's a real face of the youth culture, and uh, he's like, I, well, I guess it suits me. And his little girl, his little his sister, rolls her eyes next to this giant dog. Everything's got to be a cartoon. The family's got to have a dog bigger than any member of the family. The little girl, who's too young to even, she's rolling her eyes at the at her brother, like, oh, I can't under, I can't deal with his sarcasm. Or it wasn't even sarcasm. He just has no personality. He says, yeah, the couch will work for him, and she rolls her eyes. The couch will work for him. He's just not sociable. He's not enjoyable. They put glasses on him and some tight jeans so he looks like a kid you want to look like. But he doesn't do anything and he doesn't say anything. Just like you. My favorite ad was when Domino's, this was a few years ago, many years ago, because it was the Saints uh, Colt Super Bowl. And I lived in New York City, and my friend has all these pizzas when I get there for the Super Bowl, all from Domino's. I'm like, we live in, in Queens. Why aren't you going and getting pizza from all the corner stores that make delicious pizza rather than this garbage? And I love Domino's. I said, Domino's is the worst. I, I'm an Italian. I, don't, I never really ordered. The point is, I kept harping on them how awful this was and why you wouldn't go in New York and get New York pizza for the Super Bowl. Why would you go get pizza that you can order on Hawaii when you're in New York? And as I'm making my point, I haven't even eaten the pizza yet, nor has anybody. I'm just trashing it. We open the box, and inside the box lid is an actual promise from Domino's to make a better pizza. And then, as time went on, we saw all these commercials on TV. And it was the CEO of Domino's, I'm sure someone must remember this, that says, uh, he opens the pizza box, it looks like a, a hot circle of trash, and he says, this is unacceptable, this trash pizza. We And he says, we at Domino's promise 
to learn to make a pizza. This is unacceptable. We are going to go back. The thing we've been doing since the existence of time for our company, we're going to do it. We're going to learn to make that pizza. And on the inside of every box, it apologized. We're so sorry we never learned to make a pizza. We're going to show you what we know how to make a pizza. And, and that's it. But we're supposed to say, oh, okay. It's really good that they're learning to make the pizza. The pizza company's learning to make the pizza. I'm not going to talk about having sex with the pizza. That's the longest way I could put the sentence. You know, when you're a kid, you always find things to uh, put your penis into, I think. And uh, I just worked at a pizza place. I thought the dough was the right consistency. Not like a hot pizza right out of the oven. That would not uh, be pleasurable. But the dough, before it's rolled into... So what ended up happening, they asked me to... I took a bunch of dough home in my backpack. I shoved a backpack, filled it with dough. I figured I could, like, mold it into some sort of pleasurable creation. Somehow, my mom was on to me. Like, from the moment she picked me up from work, we drove home, and I had taken, like, the canola oil out of her pantry and brought it into my... put it in my closet with the dough. I would like, taken all the dough out of the backpack. It was, like, bulging. And she, like, op throws open the closet, and she's like, what the... Heck? She knew exactly what I was doing. And I said, uh, Hungry Howie's gave me the dough to oil up at home and bring back to work because they didn't want to pay me on the hour. They didn't want to pay me over the hour. So they said, hey, hey, Steve Rossi, you little shitty 13-year-old, take, take all this dough that people are going to, uh, that, that's our, uh, sta our supply for tomorrow. Take everything we're selling tomorrow. Take it home. Oil it all up. Put it back in your backpack. Unzip it. Throw it on the counter. And then we'll give you your money. My parents saw me coming in from prom one time. I don't know how they knew. My mom saw me. Open your bag, Steve. Open my bag. There's a fifth of vodka and a fifth of, uh, like, schnapps or something. And, you know, all hell broke loose. She took it. And then, like, my friend... I'm like, I was never a partier, but I had these friends that were having a party. They took the vodka back from her. What nerve? What shitty nerve they have to have the vodka confiscated face the punishment and then like a week later find it and take it back and my excuse was that the older kid who had given it to me first off to stash it off on me hey take this and i said his name was steve too because i think it's more believable steve to a steve that i said that they put avudine in it you know avudine love it um and it gets you like all messed up and i had to take it out and pour it out so you and dad wouldn't drink it and get high on avudine Ugh. I hate myself. I just, I do. You think I'm like kidding. Like This is the least amount of time I hate myself. I wake up groaning. I go to bed groaning. I groan in the shower. Like I'll do a set, even if I do well on stage, I'll just groan. Like, oh God, I'm so humiliating. to like, here I am, ain't I cute, ain't I clever, laugh, laugh, laugh. I just want to be funny in general. I hate the, here's Steve. The last time they didn't even say my last name. And now Steve's going to do some comedy. Well, let's give it up for Steve, the total schmuck. Uh, what, what? 